For my civic engagement project, I chose to split my time between two types of volunteer activities. Firstly, I volunteered five and a half hours total to St. Stephen's Church in my hometown of Wahiawa. Secondly, I volunteered eight hours at Na Mea Kupono, a lo'ikalo or taro patch and learning center which focuses on sustainability and Hawaiian cultural practices. Wahiawa, as with other areas of Hawaii, hosts its share of underserved individuals. The cost of living in Hawaii is incredibly high. In Colin Moore's 2019 journal article, Hawaii, Priced Out of Paradise, he outlines that a household income of $93,000 in Hawaii was considered low income, and that the average price of a single family home is $752,000. Thus, as much as Hawaii is a paradise destination for visitors, the tourism industry and military presence dominates the economy. And aside from the problematic commercialization of culture, these entities drive up home prices for locals. As a result, Moore also notes that Pacific Islanders in Hawaii are disproportionately more likely to be homeless compared to white residents. At St. Stephen's, I did several hours of work in their pantry, including organizing and stocking incoming donations, as well as condensing and tallying data intake forms, which include demographic information about those who receive St. Stephen's services. I also volunteered at one of their drive-up food distributions, where, alongside other community members, we gathered household information for each vehicle and loaded up each accordingly with different food items, including bread, milk, eggs, fruits, vegetables, canned goods, and more. This was an incredibly rewarding experience and a chance for me to give back, as I attended several similar food distributions during the pandemic, when I was furloughed from my job for seven months. The significance of St. Stephen's work in the community cannot be overstated, and they provide the basic necessity of food for those in need. In Old Inquists on the Nature of Citizenship, he describes that a sense of possession is essential to inspiring citizens to conduct themselves in a manner which benefits their society, because feeling an ownership in one's community allows them to acknowledge that they have a stake in its success. When places like St. Stephen's reach into the community and help those in need, those individuals maintain a sense of belonging to that community. In other words, by society showing compassion and meeting their needs, the bond is strengthened between community and citizen. Tucked away in the verdant community of Wailua on the North Shore, Namea Kupono hosts volunteers for work days as well as school groups. They practice natural farming techniques, and among other things, Namea Kupono harvests kalo, or taro, a Hawaiian food source. Part of their work sessions include engaging lessons on sustainability, including learning how Hawaii's endemic and indigenous ecology are impacted by natural and anthropogenic forces. I place great value on the environment, and Namea Kupono's strong emphasis on preserving and caring for the earth aligns greatly with my worldview. During my time there, I helped to build a retaining wall around one of the irrigated kalo patches, pulled weeds, and assisted in making organic fertilizer. Harvesting kalo is as much a cultural experience as an agricultural one. Kalo is pounded into poi, but to Hawaiians, kalo is more than food. Like other indigenous cultures, Hawaiians strongly emphasize their connection to the aina, or land, the Hawaiian belief system centers around the idea that we are not only dependent on the land for life, but that we actually come from it. It is believed that Haloanaka, the stillborn child of two deities, Wakea and Ho'ohokulani, was buried and from him grew Kalo. Their second child was not stillborn, and he became the first Hawaiian man named Haloa. Recognizing that Haloanaka was the firstborn who grew into Kalo, he is understood then as being the ancestor to all Native Hawaiians. Thus, Kalo represents our creation and connection to nature. Part of Na Mea Kupono's guiding principle 
is ikavamamua ikavamahope, or the future is in the past. This sentiment resonates with me, particularly because our native ancestors lived successfully in a subsistence economy for generations, in perfect harmony with the land and sea. We can learn from them and adapt their knowledge to our current world. Oldenquist noted that the equal treatment of citizens and a sense of a common good shape a moral community, and instruction in morals such as altruism, trust, and teamwork provide the basis upon which that community can form its greater identity. In my volunteer work at St. Stephen's and La Mea Cupono, this notion was incredibly apparent. It was reassuring to see children at these volunteer events because engaging youth in the community is essential if we are to raise a generation who understands the different layers of society. It expands their worldview beyond their own at a very young age fostering empathy, and equipping them with the knowledge and passion to participate in our democracy. My work at St. Stephen's and La Mea Cupono were very different from each other, but they forced me to work alongside people whom I otherwise may not have interacted. On my first day at La Mea Cupono, I worked alongside Japanese visitors. One of them was a gentleman who, as a surfer and brand ambassador in Japan for a Hawaiian surf apparel company, opted to come to Namea Kupono in order to better understand the Hawaiian history and culture. Normally, my interactions with Japanese visitors occur in the context of my job in tourism as I work in a resort which welcomes a great deal of Japanese guests. Thus, this was a unique element of globalism that I hadn't quite encountered before. In Abdul Sattar's article, Does Globalization Diminish the Importance of Nationalism?, he noted that globalism has removed barriers between different countries, and that this is often seen in its impact on business and communication. In my fellow volunteer's role in Japan as a brand ambassador for a Hawaiian company, which was in fact facilitated by globalism's market expansion, he was compelled to donate some of his time and physical labor to building a retaining wall at a Hawaiian lo'ikalo. This interaction made the big world smaller to me and has inspired me moving forward, even after graduation, to become the type of lifelong learner and traveler who digs deeper to gain better understanding of a particular culture. Because while there is valid concern that globalization can decrease nationalism and create one uniform global society, I choose to see it differently. One's strength and pride in a country can be reinforced by its interactions with other countries, much like an individual grows and learns through their experiences with others. American values like independence and equality are central to maintaining a cohesive sense of identity and a just society. At the same time, Hawaiian values like kuleana or responsibility and laulima or cooperation can be applied to our interactions with one another and the planet. They acknowledge the reciprocal status of all actions and underpin the importance of being civically engaged. Ikavama mua ikavama hope. The future is in the past. This is precisely why I opted to major in history. History is often an overlooked subject, but it is powerful in that it forces one to analyze historical events objectively to fully understand the political, social, and economic realities we face today. As the world becomes more globalized and as many of its citizens become more individualistic, an understanding of history can broaden one's perception of foreign worldviews and cultures nurture compassion toward historically marginalized groups, as well as inform meaningful legislation. I end with this olalono eo, or Hawaiian proverb. Pu pu kahi i holomua, unite to move forward. After all we have faced as individuals and a society over the last several years, my civic engagement project has instilled in me the desire to strengthen connections with those around me, especially in my community and workplace, so that we can better navigate ourselves through obstacles and toward a brighter future. <laughs>